Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Today I'm in the combine with dad and our new green cart driver arrived at the farm today and our green cart came yesterday. So my dad did a little bit of green cart training and is in the combine practice, doing practice green cart dumps with him. So he hopefully gets a feel for it. Yes, hopefully everybody will get a feel for it. Cart's hard to do. Yes, I've actually never driven grain carts, so no. I would have no idea. I enjoy taking rides in the combine with dad because it's like old times when I was young. Okay, the combine guys should do most of the speed adjustments when you guys get set. You know, it's easier for us to adjust as long as it's not going too fast. And don't let him wander out or in on you, you know, if he's getting too far out either shut the auger off or just tell him to drift back in or something. I know. I always um, do my left turn and then I'll, sometimes I do a left turn and you know when the rows are way far in? Well, that's the reason you look at the end of the row and see which way you turn when you get here. Gets pretty dusty this pass. Is your combine pretty much the same as mine, just with duels? Pretty much. Oh, and it has big head or tilt, right? See, this one's already, you push on these buttons a lot, Kate, on these. You gotta keep checking that so you can bring it back now. Oh, Hello. yeah. You just don't get brain dead and forget about that. Okay, I won't. This thing tends to let one side of the, this float thing, or the wind guard, go in the morning to want to raise it up, lower it all the way down a couple times. Oh, isn't that with all the combines? No, with this one anyway. If you got big swash, you can't have it as far down like this. And there's places when they raked this last time, Kate, they left these big piles of old straw. No, you don't want to eat it any more of that because you don't know if there's rocks in them or what. So you'll stand up your head or a little bit if you're going to cross them and see if you picked up its stuff. Because these are good rows here, though, and they start out good. Arvid will, too. And then um, you can go dump in the truck, and then we're going to take a big run around the outside of this next Don't hurry this. You know, I tell these other guys not to hurry, so don't you do it either. Oh, are we dumping in grain cart? Yes. Okay. That gets a nicer dump for the truck, right? Oh, yeah. It's way easier than the truck. 3.6 is probably... 3.7 is probably faster than the belt feet, you know. Yep. Where's our next field? It's here. Oh, the other part? The other two parts, three parts, or whatever. Taylor, it looks like you're doing good. We'll go out here to the edge of this field and start around on this next piece. So I think we should be able to make it, but I can't guarantee it. Okay, I'll meet you out there as soon as I'm done unloading. Yeah, I'd probably just come up to this corner and I should be able to read well, well, whether we're going to make it or not. And if we're not, there's a little kind of procedure we use to get dumped on the first go around. Roger that. Oh, I know the procedure. But it's been four years. If I didn't by now, it'd be kind of sad, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. You should watch me do it every first round in my life. <laughs> In my life. I'm wearing my side arm logo Kate's Egg shirt that's made and grown in the USA, so that's super cool. Dad's wearing his too under his sweatshirt. And how do you like it, Dad? Oh, it's really wonderful. Wait, wait. You gotta go higher. There you go, the Kate's yeah. Egg logo. Okay, this is probably gonna go down to this big gully here, Kate. And then it'll probably go across the road. I think I wanna ride with him around just to give him some pointers for the cart guy or something. Yep. So I'll let you take this and go with him. Oh, right now? Yeah. Okay. So pay attention to where this breaks and the, and the one, when he decided to turn, it'll probably just roll out into the path to the road. Harvard, I'm, I'm going to come go for just a little ride with you. How's that? What did he say? Pop in. <laughs> okay, this is yours. So. 
That's cute. You coming back after? No, I'm gonna. There'll probably be lunchtime before anything else Oh, after this round, you think? Well, two rounds. So my dad just got out of the combine. Now I'm going to put the back of the combine on, the header, and do rabbit speed. I just set my number two button, and now I am ready to go in my swath. I actually might wanna set it a little bit lower to get a good picking up. I'm gonna go about 3.2 miles per hour. My dad is going for a ride in the combine with Arvid. Arvid said when my dad radioed and told him that, Arvid's like, hop in. <laughs> so that's really cute. Oh, this is a little low. So I'm picking my header up and resetting the button. So when I press button number two, at the beginning of my next row, my header immediately sets to this predetermined height. And then these headers are supposed to have a feature called auto float, which basically means it floats to the ground at that header height that you had set. After two passes, it should be lunch. Hopefully we'll make it all the way around this field without having to dump. We just dumped in the grain cart, but my dad will let me know. And if we're not able to make it all the way around, what happens is I stop, pick up my header, back into the in-between of this next row and my row and then the grain cart driver can pull up beside me into my row and then we'll just do a stop dump. So my dad was telling our grain cart driver, Taylor, who you'll meet at lunch, about how he will explain the procedures if we're not able to go a full round without dumping. We are right by the homestead right now, actually. I'll turn the camera around and you'll be able to see. There is my great-grandfather's homestead and elevator that he had built. So now I'm continuing making my round. I've seen a lot of grasshoppers lately at lunch and in the field, so we still have a grasshopper issue. So I just saw a plastic coupling in the field and I'm getting out of the combine because I don't want to run it over. And it's right in my line of header and I don't want the combine to eat it. So I'm getting out to grab it. And I'll just put it in my cab and throw it out at lunch. That's kind of disgusting, but you have to do it. And my dad over there. Now that I'm back in the cab, I'll get going. Now I'm back running again. There was a plastic cup in my swath and the combine kept wanting to run it over so I had to go out and get it. My header's now a bit low. So I'm gonna pick it up. And when you pick up your header and you have auto float on, it turns off the auto floating header. So now I'm going back to 3.2 miles per hour. And I see Darcy's truck over there. I'm on a pass headed, I have to think about this, north. Oh, yeah, I'm on a ha pass headed north. There we go. My grain tank's about half full. I think it's hard to tell because the window is so dirty, but I think that my combine cleans the grain a little bit better than this one. And my co combine actually has a large grain concave, which means it's made more to harvest peas and things like that, whereas this combine can't harvest that. It's small grain only. For example, wheat and barley. Right now we are picking up winter wheat. So it is interesting that the small grain concave isn't cleaning the grain as good as the large grain concave. The sieves on this combine are set at 18 and five. The fan is running 820. The moisture reader in my dad's combine does work and it says 8%, so that's good. We usually wouldn't pick up or cut wheat above a 12% moisture. That means it's too green and not ripe enough. Even if the wheat doesn't look green, it can still have a high moisture and we can't put wet wheat in the bins or else it will get really moldy and it also can start on fire. So we can put it in a bin with a fan, but we're limited with the amount of grain bins we have with fans. So if it's too early to start harvest, you usually just don't start. We wouldn't put anything higher than 14 moisture in a bin with a fan. Probably, I think we've gone as high as 16, but that's not very good at all. Oh, something else just went through the combine there. I didn't catch that in time. That was some sort of sheet of some sort. I'm not really sure. It wasn't very big though, so I think it should be okay. I'm going through a little bit of a water hole right here, so there's not much wheat. There are three passes that go all the way around the field because we have three combines. Even though one is broken down, we didn't know that when we were swapped. I'm now going 3.4, 3.5 miles per hour. And the wheat says it's doing 11 bushels per acre, which my dad's is usually higher than my bushel per acre meter read, so I would say mine. Oh, now it says 18. 
So maybe that water area confused it. There are little kind of wind tornadoes that come through here, just little ones that spread the weed out of its swath. And then you have to direct the combine over here to get some of that wheat. And then you're good to go again. Up here, there's a water spigot that goes around. So my dad wants to make sure I'm doing those passes and the passes with the power lines also. Just because Arvid is very new to combines, you don't want to make any mistakes and, and it's quite challenging to maneuver around these things. So because I've, this is my fourth year running combine full time at Harvest, I have a little bit more experience with stuff like that. But it's interesting, Darcy says to be a veteran combine driver, you have to be doing it at least 15 years. So I've got 11 more to go.